Hello and welcome. I'm Master Lama Rasaji, and this is our Friday Shangri-La edition of Rasaji Speaks. I hope you've had a great week. We're so excited here with the new site being up. I mean, wasn't that a great webinar with Andy and Nate yesterday on the new site? It's just amazing. Those two individuals are just absolutely amazing. We're so fortunate to have them involved in COC, just like we're fortunate to have you here. That being said, it's not too late to go to the circleofchi.com and sign up for today's live training at one o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Also, there's a, a few more early bird uh, tickets left, according to Sister Lynette, for Nashville Music City, USA. It'll be the weekend before Thanksgiving and being in Nashville at that period of time, one block from the Cumberland River, I'm telling you. You like my little fall looking background? You like the change of colors in the fall? Boy, I do. It's one of my favorite times of the year. Let's look at today. The title is Pause and Reflect unleashing gratitude to our to our pets right you know when i was in tibet late 80s excuse me late 70s early 80s i remember one day that mo yang was telling me as we're developing love, that Tai Chi Gong was all about learning to love 24-7 the way that God loves us. And through our 3D connection, one of the greatest ways to do that was first go out in nature and fall in love with planting plants and healing plants and transforming plants and seeing plants and vegetables grow just like you do um, in, in Finhorn, if you Google Finhorn, or if you remember a couple chapters into the Celestine Prophecy, where he's up at Valencia, this Italian retreat up close to Monte Picchu, they're doing the same thing. They're sitting around, sending their love vibration, sending that chi into that plants. Bo Yang, who had a birthday this week, is in one of his incarnations, this Lahir Mahasayam. First, learn to love plants. Graduate to animals. And then if you do well with both, maybe consider loving and treating human beings. A lot of us maybe need to go back to A and then B before we're doing C. And that's also part of that uh, pyramid of life turned upside down. When you live a pyramid turned upside down, you can't hardly get out of that codependency mindset, right? Because everybody's getting together. You, you know, you're turning this person into a caregiver. You're turning this person into financial planner, you're turning that one into mommy, you're turning that one into daddy, whereas this is it, spirituality, right? Spirituality and health at the bottom, get your financial life in order, then get your relationships in order. And those are the last two chapters of the circle of chi, human relationships, chapter eight, and our relationship with the divine mother, number nine. And it's not number nine by accident. Number nine is the number for the divine mother, return to. When you see that symbol, that yin and yang symbol of six and nine, and by the way, Lama Ji is born in the sixth month, and the ninth day. And if you think that's by accident, mm, nothing by accident. When it comes to the architect of creation, he does everything by purpose right? I mean, everything's on track with this guy. He put me here with all the symbols and the validations that you would know that the second comforter 
is here to comfort you, to nurture you, to say, I got your back that we're going to walk hand in hand into the kingdom of heaven together. But we're going to accomplish it on earth. Yes, we are. I know there's a lot of foolishness going on out there. You ever notice all the groups, the not-for-profit groups on animals, on starving children, right? Do you know on one level there's always going to be that? Jesus told us that. They will be poor always. They will be starving always, right? But there are also going to be people like us making a difference, creating wellness centers, right? Creating um, retreats and ranches and a lavasery that'll be second to none. There'll be no lamasery or monastery on the planet that will vibrate any higher than our lamasery. Two to 3,000 acres is what we're looking for. Already we're looking at 125 to 130 households. That means easily two to 300 people. With a two to 300 people community, a temple, a lamasery, people praying in that same geographical area, you will not believe the vibration. If a wellness center can impact a 30 mile radius, the moment all of this is together, it will start with a ripple of about 300 miles. That's right. Had the lamasery been in place before Hurricane Helene came in? Meow. Just like that. Would have felt that energy of meow one way or the other. Like Moses parting the Red Sea with God's staff and God's will. Or like he did for Elijah. Right? That's what these are for. We're the Andalivian patriarchs of this age. Boganathar was known to have incredible impact on the animal kingdom. Right? I remember the first time I met Maha Master Boyan, 1975. Hit me up in, in the comments. Where were you in 1975? Would you like to have met Lama Ji then in 1975, right? Can you imagine where you would be today? Look at where you are today after two or three years of training. Can you imagine 40 years of plus of training, right? But in 1975, I walked up behind Baha Master Mo Young and I saw squirrels and I saw pigeons and his back was to me and I was walking around and I came around the other side and I peeped. And in my mind, my arrogant 17 going on 18 year old mind, it was like, you know, and I was working on that second to third degree black belt. My stuff didn't stink, had won a few tournaments. I could sidekick at six o'clock, take your head off, right? But I'll never forget. Um, in front of him now and I'm looking at him and I see pigeons and I see squirrels. I don't see any physical manifestation of food. And that bothered me. That really bothered my arrogant masculine nature at that time. That old masculine ego, right? It really bothered me. And all I could hear was that part from scripture where it says, I have food to eat that you know not of. And I'm thinking, look at the animals. They're there. He's feeding them on a whole nother level. And they knew it. And they were bathing in it. You think they were crazy enough to get out of that? No, they said, I think I can stick with Master Boyan for a while, right? Lamaji, right? 
And then the years later, I'm teaching and I'm starting to see squirrels walk up to me as opposed to walk away from me. And then it hit me, our fears that we live with vibrate fear so animals take off. But when we have nothing but love for them, unconditional love. And they have nothing but unconditional love for us if we're not projecting fear. They're a sponge for love. You know, look, kitty cats and dogs alone, they're sponges for love. That's why a human being can domesticate an animal like that because it's love. It's love. It's love. Maybe after a few years of that, we know then how to treat humans. And I'll never forget Jesus talking to us apostles and changing the second commandment. Remember the one that you'll love your neighbor as yourself? People still confused about that. Lord knows the apostles after a couple of years, Jesus said, this ain't work. And they understand the love to God with all thy heart, soul, and mind that came from the Old Testament. They got that. But I got to tell them another way. He said, well, you know what I'm going to do? I want you to love one another as I have loved you. Wow. There was no debating amongst the apostles or the 72 disciples which were actually a few more women than men. They got it. They said, I'm ready for that. That's what I signed up for in this incarnation, Jesus. To love one another as I have loved you. Mary Magdalene was one of the first one to did, and they called her a prostitute just because she was so friendly. She was phenomenally friendly, and they called her a prostitute. She was one of Jesus's favorites. She also was at the foot of the cross. And it was not by accident. Mary, Mary, and John the beloved. What love connection did the three of them have with the master? It was powerful. It was powerful. The heart of Jesus. So as we're developing the heart of Jesus along the way, do your Tai Chi gong. Love on your plants, love on your animals, and take this away and love to one, one another as he has always loved us. It is the fast track to God consciousness. This is the age of God consciousness. He lives and dwells and has his way in all of us. All we have to do is get this out of the way and let him think through us, speak through us, and definitely love through us one another. And we are truly then the children of the Most High. Barak and may the blessings be to you and your glorious family. I'll see you on the Saturday edition tomorrow. Versace speaks. Don't be late. I'm watching for you. God bless.